السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to Reflections in Faith, where we dive deep into everyday challenges and how we can navigate them with guidance from our beautiful Dean. I'm Nora. And I'm Shakib. Welcome back to our podcast series, Reflections in Faith. Today, we're unpacking an important topic, raising Muslim children in a secular world. It's no small feat, but with the right approach, we can empower our kids with the faith, resilience, and confidence to handle whatever life throws at them. Exactly. It's not just about rules and routines. It's about nurturing kids who are proud of their Islamic identity and have the inner strength to stay grounded, even when the world around them doesn't always align with their values. So, let's get into it. A lot of parents are familiar with the concept of resilience. But did you know that resilience and identity are actually deeply connected? Yes, there's a fascinating study from Yaqeen Institute that explores this. It argues that Islamic identity isn't just a part of who we are, it is the foundation of resilience. When children truly connect to their faith, they build a powerful sense of self-worth that helps them stay strong. That's right. When kids know their value in the eyes of Allah, it acts like a shield against negativity. It's more than just fitting in or following rules. It's about standing tall in their faith, like a teen wearing hijab for the first time, despite the stares. Exactly. That confidence to be unapologetically Muslim doesn't happen overnight. It comes from nurturing three core qualities, what the paper calls the big three of resilience, self-esteem, self-efficacy, and self-trust. Let's break that down, starting with self-esteem. Every child deserves to feel good about themselves, not because of what they achieve, but because they know Deep down, I am Allah's creation. That reminds me of a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said the sanctity of a believer is greater than the Kaaba. If our kids understand that their worth comes from who created them, not from what people think of them, it changes everything. That's beautiful. And then we have self-efficacy, the I can do it attitude. It's not just about surface level confidence, though. It's about knowing we work hard and trust in Allah's plan, like tying the camel and leaving the rest to Him. Exactly. It teaches our kids to strive for excellence, but also rely on Allah. They don't have to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders because Allah is always there. And lastly, self-trust. This is especially important as kids grow older and face peer pressure. Think about Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him. When tempted, he stayed firm, trusting both his faith and moral compass, saying he'd rather go to prison than do what was wrong. It's that kind of conviction and trust we want to build in our children. When they know right from wrong and trust themselves to make the right decisions, even when everyone else is doing the opposite, that's real strength. Now let's get practical. How do we, as parents, actually nurture these qualities? It starts with the language we use. Instead of saying, don't be shy, we could say, it's okay to take your time warming up. Small shifts like this can really build up their confidence. Yes. And focusing on strengths is another big one. Look for those moments, whether it's your child being generous or helping out at home, and acknowledge them. MashaAllah, Allah loves those who are generous. It reinforces their faith and builds self-worth. Another great strategy is breaking big goals into small, achievable steps. Instead of saying, memorize this surah, start with a few verses. Celebrate those little wins along the way. And here's a big one. Normalizing mistakes. As parents, we tend to shield our kids from failure. But the reality is, mistakes are part of learning. We need to show them it's okay to fall as long as they get back up. Absolutely. Share your own stories of when you messed up and what you learned from it. It shows them that even we as parents are still figuring things out. The Quran and the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are filled with stories that teach resilience. Think about Prophet Musa leading his people out of slavery or Prophet Yusuf rising from imprisonment. 
These stories aren't just bedtime tales. They're blueprints for resilience. Exactly. They remind us that even in the darkest times, Allah is always there, working things out. These lessons aren't just for our kids, they're for us too. Raising resilient kids isn't about controlling every aspect of their lives. It's about building a relationship with them where faith is part of everyday conversations. Even when we don't have all the answers saying, let's explore this together, teaches them that faith is a journey. And it's not about memorizing every rule. It's about fostering that deep connection to Allah, one that will guide them through life's ups and downs. This has been such a valuable conversation, Nora. I feel like I've learned so much. Same here. And to our listeners, remember, raising children is a journey we're all navigating. You're not alone. Lean on your faith. Keep asking the tough questions. And trust that Allah is guiding you every step of the way. Until next time, keep reflecting, keep learning, and keep striving to raise resilient Muslim children. We'll see you in the next episode in the Reflections in Faith podcast, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.